jolly good. Hello boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Clank Zoka, and welcome <laughs> to another <laughs> My Thoughts On. Today I'll be talking about Ethel and Ernest. And for those who doesn't know, for those who don't know, sorry, what F1 Ernest is, it is a it's a film based on a graphic novel by none other than Raymond Briggs. Yes, the Raymond Briggs who brought Father Christmas, and most iconically, the Snowman. And this film is the story about his parents, Ethel and Ernest Briggs. And how they lived through, lived through, I believe, the 1930s, going through World War Two, and all these other historical events that happened in the UK, or in Britain, if you want the correct term. And um, yeah, I haven't seen this film, I've heard of it, and I love The Snowman and Father Christmas, and... Um, I think he did one called The Bear as well. Uh, I think that's by Raymond Briggs as well. Um, if you don't know what other films have been, have been made from the guy, um, there was also When the Wind Blows, which is surprisingly quite similar to this. That film is directed by... Um, oh, what's his name? He, uh, he died a few years ago. Um, uh, oh, uh, Jimmy T... Uh, Murakami same guy who directed that Christmas Carol the movie which people either love or hate and that film I have watched I won't do my thoughts on it because there isn't really a lot to say and also it's one of those films that I will never watch again oh it's not terrible I think it's a really tragically traumatising film and that's the reason why I the, I rarely watch films again mainly because of how much they fucking like left a huge fucking impact on me and they traumatised me that film fucking traumatised me I watched it I think in 2017 I think and wow I mean the film is very well made the animation is like really really charming and impressive they use sketch drawings of um, of uh, Jim and Hilda and I think they use like live action back backgrounds as well and the film is like it's well made, but it's also haunting, sad, depressing, interesting, but also just... It, it reminded me a lot of Watership Down and, like... Oh, what's it? Uh, uh, Land Before Time. You know, these are, like, supposed to be, like, kids' films, but they're actually really dark and very depressing. I wouldn't say this is, like, a kids' film, per se. Um, It's a PG, and I... You know, it's an understandable PG, but I'll be very honest with you. Um, I think it's more for like grown ups and adults. If you haven't watched When the Wind Blows, I do recommend it. It is a really tragic, but also really hauntingly beautiful film. And I'm a person who loves sad films, but this, along with The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, and any any live action film with an actual dog. If it's like Marley and Me or A Dog's Purpose, which I haven't seen, I will not do those sorts of, like, sad films. No. They're just too sad, too much, and they are well done, but it's just, ugh, too much. So back on to F1 Ernest. So let's talk about it, shall we? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. So, pretty much it just tells the the life of these, of these two people, um... Ethel Briggs, who's voiced by uh, Brenda uh, Bleff, Bleffy, I think that's how you pronounce her name, who used to be a maid, and she got married to Ernest, voiced by the national treasure himself, and the kind of reckon, and even an unrecognisable voice of Jim Broadbent, who um, who is a milkman, and they both get married, and you know these sorts of, like, like, uh, life his, historic films you see them at a young age when they're you know married and when they're in love and when they have a child which coincidentally would be Raymond Raymond Briggs and going through like I said before uh, World War Two, obviously 
and all these other different historical British events, like against the Germans and the French. Obviously, being a married couple, they're going to argue and actually get really teared up within these events, you know. But, um, yeah. What a treat this film was. Um, This is one of the most... Like, really down-to-earth, like, British animated films I've seen in a while. Like, this is not cartoony, zappy, tappiness. Although, to this film's credit, this film is actually funny in how it should be in terms of its Britishness. There is one one poo joke at the beginning, but besides that, it's a really charming, really sweet, and also really... Really funny film. Not like clever funny, but more like charmingly funny film. I love the sense of Britishness and all these these, these great, uh, you know, lines and all that. It's a really charming film, but also really heartbreaking too. This, this is not hard to follow. This is a very easy film to get into. When a character cries, you understand why they cried. And sure, they do say why, but it's part of the struggle, really. Like, if I just sat down and looked sad, I wouldn't just cry. I mean, I would cry, but I would tell the person who's in the room and just said, um, you know, someone that I knew, who I knew quite well, died. And that's another thing, too. Um, The emotional elements in this film actually are real i can't tell if this is accurate to the book or if that's of this is how raymond remembers his parents but it's so real and it does feel like the the actors are actually really really uh, you know acting their hearts off to this like it's really sad and even the ending which i will not give anything away nothing at all but it is heartbreaking it's sad and it's like there are a few moments in the film where I thought this was, there are moments I can relate to the film but at the same time it was a very different occasion where it felt a little too personal to me like, like all of this is very similar to how me and my life's going in a way and there were some moments I was like oh should I keep because I got the film on DVD and I was like should I should I keep it? Because I love the film. I actually really, really like it. But at the same time, there's things in it that's just... It feels a little too personal to me. And I don't want to think about seeing myself in Raymond or in, er- or in Ernest. But the more I think about it, the film just kind of... It, I, I felt quite welcomed and very calm about the world of this film. And it is really, really joyful but also very sad as well um the animation for the film is very very gorgeous um it's 2d animated i don't know if it's rotoscoped but it kind of looks like it there is a little bit of 3d animation that uh, kind of like chica and rita reminds me of the illusionist sometimes the 3d animation does blend in well but sometimes it can look a bit off like the um this, I, I won't give too much away, but when Raymond is visited by Ernest, they see a plane losing its engine and it goes down. And then when it goes past them, it doesn't even look like it's there. It just looks like it's in the backdrop. So, obviously this film's not on a high budget, but... Um, but, y- 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 you know... um they're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to see a plane go down, and that's fine, but it just doesn't look entirely convincing as well. And our two main leads, which is Ethel and Ernest, they are really, really lovely. They do remind me a lot of Hilda and Jim from When the Wind Blows. I can't say which is better, because both couples are equally as charming and lovely as each other. You know, Jim, that, Jim, Ernest is the father and of um, Raymond and her, and the husband of obviously uh, Ethel. Um he's a joy. He's an absolute joy. He's someone who has you know, he's the typical like, you know, you know, cockney geezer bloke who's like very wealthy and very optimistic. He can be a little bit, you know, of a one of the, you know those like you know one of your mates who's always like 
the you know the one who's always trying to cheer everyone up and just be silly. He, that's what Ernest is. He's also one that knows about the war, knows about politics and, and history in, in a way as well. And yes, they do mention Adolf Hitler's name. May I remind you that this film, it, it's very, well, according to the DVD I've got, it's PG. But according to INDB, it's 12A. Honestly, I'm fine with either rating, but this film is not for kids. I don't know why PG's there, and also, to be fair, PG does not instantly mean it's a kid's film. You can debate that, depending on what the film is. I mean, Watership Down's rated you for some reason, but PG does not equally mean that kids will like it. It means parental guidance, which means parents might need to guide the kids on what's going on. And this film really goes hard on the on the old British politics, the MPs, Adolf Hitler as well, and the Tories, and Labour as well. This is a very post... No, is it pre-Brexit film, kind of a way? And coming from someone who doesn't know anything, or I guess little about politics, it doesn't affect me really, but... um, I'm quite surprised that this is a very graph... It's not... Well, I mean, it's graphically adult. It's more adult than I imagined, but... Yeah, I thought it was all handled really well. And actually, this is a film that is, 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 an, is an adult film, but it's actually, like, you know, grown up and it's actually not silly and, and like, over... The, it's not like Family Guy or anything that's trying to be silly or political. This film is political, but it does it in a very genuine but also very lively way. And I like it, and I really like it. And the voice acting, fucking hell, the voice acting is terrific. Jim Broadband... Fucking Jim Broadbent. He is one of the, you know, the greatest actors from this country. He's a big national treasure. Any film he's in, I will instantly, like, just... You know, just... Any film he's in, even if it's not that good, he's always a joy. And here, he really fits the Cockney, cool, blimey, um, accent to Ernest, and he really captures his character. Even when the film gets emotional, he really sells at it brilliantly. It doesn't feel like acting. It just feels like Jim Broadbent is just acting. Just acting. Same with uh, Brenda uh, Bletham as Ethel. She acts... And the character of, um, of Ethel is more naive compared to Ernest, she thinks that a lot of things are all rubbish and she's very proper and tries to keep things tidy. And their chemistry together is really, really lovely. Really, really nice. Um, And uh, back to Brenda, who does a really terrific job. She's very gentle with her voice and her performance. Um, You've also got Raymond Briggs, who's voiced by uh, Luke Fredaway from Attack the Block. Speaking of which, the the sequel... Could happen with John Boyega and Joe Cornish returning, but that's another story for another time. But I am excited though. But he really does uh, betray the author quite well. You've also got um, Roger Alam, Alam, as well. You've also got Pam Ferris from Nativity, uh, Peter White, uh, w- White. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, from uh, Hot Fuzz. As well, you've got some recognisable people here, and they do a fantastic job. But mainly it's Broadbent and um, and uh, uh, Bletham that stand out the most. Um, despite the animation's 3D being a little... How do I put this? Strange and also out of place. This is a really beautiful film. I loved it. F1 Ernest, I think, is a... A rather particularly underrated little film from the UK. I think it's very well told. It's emotional. It's powerful. It's joyful. It's interesting. You do learn more about Raymond Briggs. And there's even a couple of Easter eggs in there. You'll notice if you're a fan or not. The animation is wonderful in its hand-drawn animation. The characters, the two main characters, are so well-defined and... They're both really lovely and 
have unique personalities and they're very well performed too um along with even the music i thought was very well chosen for the time time period like i said may i remind you this is not a kids film exactly unless you want them to learn something or unless they're doing like homework and then i i say watch it or something like that but genuinely speaking anyone can watch it because it is terrific um, comparing this to When the Wind Blows, I will watch this over that film. Even though I really like When the Wind Blows, I wouldn't call that a perfect film, but I did really like it. But this, this was better. Ethel and Ernest, even though the animation, you know what? The animation, from, you know, the 3D animation doesn't look entirely convincing, but this film was on a low budget, so do you know what? I'll give it a pass. Um, I'm going to give the film a 10 out of 10. I know, I know, I should have gave it a lower rating, but I can't help it. This film is, you know, amazing. And and I am actually being honest. I'm, just, I'm not just giving it a 10 out of 10 just because, but it is a really noteworthy film to get a 10. So there you go. Ethel and Ernest. What a genuinely nice surprise for me. So, did Chica and Rita... Done, F1 Ernest. What else is next? Ah, Loving Vincent, which got nominated at the 2018 Academy Awards. And I apparently, from what I've heard, the first fully, you know, painted animated feature about Vincent van Gogh. Or Van Gogh. So look forward to that. And if you have watched Ernest and Celestine, what do you think about it? Is it good, bad, decent? Do you want to see it? Let me know below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. And until next time, bye for now.